Why are we attracted to symmetry? Why do we human beings delight in seeing perfectly round planets through the lens of a telescope and six-sided snowflakes on a cold winter day? The answer must be partly psychological. I would claim that symmetry represents order, and we crave order in this strange universe we find ourselves in. The search for symmetry and the emotional pleasure we derive when we find it must help us make sense of the world around us just as we find satisfaction in the repetition of the seasons and the reliability of friendships. Symmetry is also economy. Symmetry is simplicity. Symmetry is elegance. And however we define the mysterious quality that we call beauty, we associate symmetry with beauty. Both Darwin and Freud have long argued that our sense of beauty and the appeal of beauty originated with the imperative for sexual reproduction and the association of beauty with a vibrant mate. As Darwin wrote in The Descent of Man, a sense of beauty has been declared to be peculiar to man. But when we behold male birds displaying their plumes in splendid colors before the females, while other birds not so decorated make no such display, it is impossible to doubt that the females admire the beauty of their male partners. As women everywhere deck themselves with these plumes, the beauty of such ornaments cannot be disputed. Clearly, human-made art and architecture abound with symmetry. The Taj Mahal has a central dome and arch, two identical side domes, and four identical towers symmetrically placed. Leading to the building is a rectangular pool with equally spaced cypress trees on both sides of the pool and symmetrical gardens beyond. The octagon on Roosevelt Island in New York, designed by Alexander Jackson Davis, is shaped like you-know-what. Leonardo da Vinci's famous Vitruvian Man depicts a male figure with two identical sets of outstretched and equally spaced arms and legs, one set inscribed within a circle and one within a square. The mosaic floor of the great cathedral at Cologne has a stunning set of nested circles filled with symmetrically placed flowers. A widely reproduced image of Lakshmi shows the Hindu goddess sitting in the center of a circular flower with two identical arms raised upward and holding identical yellow flowers, two more identical arms lowered and releasing flower petals, and two identical elephants on each side of her pouring water from identical jugs. In the end, it is easier to explain why bees construct honeycombs shaped like perfect hexagons than why human beings place identical towers on the sides of the Taj Mahal, or the two grandmothers on equal sides of the mother. The first is a result of economy and mathematics, the second of psychology and aesthetics. Perhaps in asking why the pervasive symmetries in nature are found appealing to the human mind and imitated in our human-made constructions, we are making an erroneous distinction between our minds and the remainder of nature. Perhaps we are all of the same stuff. After all, our minds are made of the same atoms and molecules as everything else in nature. The neurons in our brain obey the same physical laws as planets and snowflakes. Most important, our brains developed out of nature, out of hundreds of millions of years of sensory response to sunlight and sound, and to tactile connection to the world around our bodies. And the architecture of our brains was born from the same trial and error, the same energy principles, the same pure mathematics that happen in flowers and jellyfish and Higgs particles. Viewed in this way, our human aesthetic is necessarily the aesthetic of nature. Viewed in this way, it is nonsensical to ask why we find nature beautiful. Beauty and symmetry and minimum principles are not qualities we ascribe to the cosmos and then marvel at their perfection. They are simply what is just like the particular arrangement of atoms that make up our minds. We are not observers on the outside looking in. We are on the inside, too. <laughs>